what is up everybody we are back in the garage working on the 650 barber build and there's something that i've been struggling with let me show you what that is believe it or not i've been struggling with this gas tank if you back up and you look at the overall stature of the bike to me the gas tank is just too long i, I just I keep looking at it. I like the gas tank, but I don't love it and I need to love it. So what I did was I had Tucker.com send me another option, more of a peanut style tank. And I'm thinking, you know, it's gonna fit the stature of this bike. This bike's not very bulky. It's not like a Harley that has a lot of mass to it. It's a very slim bike. And you need a gas tank that flows with that the weight of the bike. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna pull this tank off and I'm gonna pray that this new peanut tank looks really good on the bike. You guys let me know what you think. I think I'm gonna love it. All right guys, if you wanna own this bike when it's done, along with a full set of speed and strength riding gear, all you gotta do is go to patreon.com and support the build series for as little as $1 a video. You can qualify to win this bike. Oh man, it's perfect. All right guys, you don't even know how stoked I am right now. I've been struggling with that other gas tank. Every time I look at the bike, I'm like, it's just not exactly what this bike needs. As soon as I put this tank on the bike, I was like, yes, it is perfect. Oh my God, I love it. Look how thin the tank is from the back wheel. Let me get a better angle here. It looks a little bit longer on this camera than it really is, but it's nice and narrow, flows well with the handlebars and the seat and the back fender it tells you some different angles here it's just ah dude it's perfect i'm stoked because if you've been watching this series you know i've been struggling with a gas tank this is the fourth gas tank i put on this bike so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to pull the gas tank off i'm going to pull the back fender off i'm going to take the back fender down to the welding fab shop and i'm going to do a little bit of welding on it for some of the brackets because believe it or not today i'm going to paint the tank and the back fender and I didn't really expect to be doing this today but I was riding home from work yesterday and I got a new helmet that I'll wear on my bobber here because sometimes I don't want to wear an open face helmet because of all the wind and I'm going on a long ride so check out this helmet I picked up from speed and strength yesterday as I'm riding home I'm thinking I love the finish of this helmet see how it's kind of like a silver with this black scuffed finish and I thought man that would be pretty sweet on this bike right here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pick up the supplies today which isn't going to be much to test this out so we're simply going to sand this metal down so it's got a nice even finish you can see it's pretty scuffed up and we're going to sand this down get these finishes looking the same and then i'm going to show you the technique i'm going to use to try to accomplish this kind of finish right here and the good thing is it's not going to take a lot of money to test it out you know it'll be clear coated and everything but for very little money, we can test it out. And if it sucks, we just scrap it and start over again. But if it works, we got a sick looking bike that looks unique. I like the idea of doing it like this because it's kind of a, it's kind of a grungy feel, but it's kind of like a clean grungy feel, you know what I mean? So, and it's totally different. I don't want to just do matte black or satin black. It's been done a thousand times. So um, let's quit BSing around. I'm gonna pull these off real quick and then we'll see you guys at the welding shop. One thing I want to do before I pull up this back fender is the chain has been rubbing on it slightly. So I'm just going to put a little mark on here while I have it on the bike so I can tell exactly where the chain's hitting. There's a little bit of a mark, but I just want to come in. We're going to have to trim this back a little bit before we paint it. This is the area where it's rubbing right here. Okay, so here we are my buddy's wrought iron metal shop and before I dig into the bike I need to give a call out to him. He has allowed me to use this shop to build my bikes and that's very generous. If you guys ever need any custom wrought iron done for your house, this guy does amazing work. He forges it all by hand in these ovens and on these presses. CR wrought iron, he's up basically out of Riverside, California and super nice work. So if you live in Southern California and you need like handrails for your house or a gate outside or anything wrought iron, this guy does amazing work. So here's everything I need to get this done and it's not very much stuff. Um, I bought three things of sanding pads, different grits, you got your 80, your 120, 
and your fine 220. This will be the last stuff. This is to knock off the heavy stuff, the heavy scratches, and then you just work your way down. I might not even need the 120. Each of these were five bucks each. I bought some 3M scuff pads. These were like 650. I bought a tack cloth to wipe off any dust while painting. This was like three bucks. When you're using clear, I'm using clear satin on this. Minwax, this is good stuff. You want to use a polyurethane. You don't want to use anything that's not polyurethane will not seal the metal the way this does. Each of these cans were like 12 bucks. I bought two just in case. I might only need one. I bought a can of matte black spray paint from Krylon. That was five bucks. A little bit of lacquer thinner is always good to have around to clean the metal and such. Nine bucks for that. Then I ended up buying some towels for like four bucks. So that's everything you need. Obviously, too, you need a, a sander here. So first thing I'm gonna do is get this fender prepped for paint. Um, it's gonna weld on these pieces here. I'm gonna weld another bracket down here at these marks because I ended up moving it. And then uh, do a couple of notches out here so the chain clears the fender. And then we'll start sanding the metal. Uh, I got my gas tank right here, ready to go. Let's dig into it. All right, so for the painting, I'm just gonna focus on the gas tank, show you the guy's technique on this. We'll obviously apply it to the back fender, but you don't need to see all that. But let's just try to get the gas tank dialed in. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put some of this 80 grit paper on this sander. It's held on with Velcro, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna wipe the tank down first before I start on it with some lacquer thinner. A lot of times these tanks ship with like a, a, an oily base on them to keep them from rusting. We wanna get rid of that. We'll hit it with the 80, see how that looks, and then uh, we'll go from there. Make sure you use a nice clean rag for this. This one's not very oily, this gas tank. I pulled them out of the bag before where they're just dripping in oil. Okay, so here's the challenge here. The side of this tank has some really deep, well, they're not deep, but it's got some really visible scoring. So that's what we really need to focus on there. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's sticking out 
the 80 grit is really taking out the smaller stuff super easy. I don't know if you can see that with the reflection. It's looking nice. So I went ahead and burned through two pieces of 80 grit paper. You can see it's got this nice finish to it. I didn't get out all the uh, texture in the tank, but I'm okay with that because it kind of gives the tank a little more character when it's got a little bit of, I mean, you can't feel these lines. They're just kind of there. But um, yeah, I, I kind of like it there because it gives the, the tank a little more character. So we're gonna go straight from the uh, 80 to the uh, 220 paper here. So we'll just hit this real quick with that. And then uh, the next step is paint. Yeah, I can already tell that's giving it a nice smooth finish. Okay, so the 220 grit got it looking pretty bitchin'. Um, that's as far as I'm gonna take this thing. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna wipe it down with a tack cloth, make sure there's no dust on it. And then I'm gonna cover it with the uh, matte black spray paint. Not super heavy, because I'm gonna rub most of it off. And then uh, I'll come back and we'll just kind of scuff it away until it um, looks good. So let's hang the tank up so we can work on it. This is basically just a tack cloth. It's just a sticky cloth. Takes away any loose particles that could be left. You want to wipe it real light with this. You don't want to press too hard because you don't want the adhesive to come off on the gas tank. You can see it's even taking a little bit of dirt off. Kind of paint pretty good. I always shake them upside down in case things settle at the bottom. I always give a little squirt away. It's a light mist. That's all you want. It's not going to take very much black on this thing to do the job. So this is what I normally do for an initial tap coat if I'd be painting this thing you know, all black and keeping it black. It's just a light tack coat. This is all we'll need for black. We won't need to put any more on besides this. Because we screw up when we're scraping it off. Doesn't even have to be that even because like I said, scraping it off. One thing I wish I had done is I forgot to bring the helmet down here with me to do this. So what I might do is let this uh, paint just kind of set for a while, take everything home where the helmet is and do it there just so I can match it up, you know? I wasn't gonna paint the bottom of the tank, but I think I will just for added protection. I'm gonna let this set up for a little bit. Maybe I'll throw just a little bit more on as it tacks up. And then uh, we'll take it home and we'll do the uh, scuffing back there. Check it out guys, I got something new for my workshop at home and I'm super excited about it. When you do bike builds, you accumulate so much stuff that it's really hard to organize it unless you have places to put it. So, look at that nice big toolbox. Bought it at Lowe's, 500 bucks. I'm eventually gonna do a video about reorganizing my tools, which might be pretty interesting, so stay tuned for that. Let's get this stuff home. All right guys, so here we are back at the house, ready to start scuffing the paint off the tank here. Uh, I got my reference helmet here with the texture on it. What I wanna do with this is I don't wanna scrape it all off evenly. I'm gonna kinda do it like a two-tone, like maybe darker along the edges and along the bottom edge. So it's not just one even surface like this. It's kinda like dark and light. So, you know, let's just uh, start hacking away at it. Uh, you gotta remember too, this is experimentation, you know, I mean, you, you can expect to make mistakes, but in the spirit of being a bobber, you know, bobbers are all about garage builds, so this is definitely a garage paint here. 
Wow, it's not coming off very easily, that's for sure. I might have to start off with some heavy sandpaper and then work my way up to a scotch pad. All right, this is some 120 grit paper here. Oh yeah, there we go. Got a feeling I should have put on less black paint. It's starting to break through. The problem is it's clogging up my paper here. You can see it's breaking through the paint on top. Yeah, I definitely should have put on less black paint, that's for sure. Uh, should have just gave it a miss job. It's hard to tell when you're doing this for the first time. So I want it just to be kind of a highlight of metal showing through, like in this area here. And then I'm going to sand down the side. So it's uh, fading to black along the edges. I don't know if you guys can tell what's going on here. Because it's even hard for me to see what's going on. So anyways, you know what I'm doing here, you know the technique. Let me um, let me play with this for a while and I'll get it to a point where uh, I'm ready to show you again. So what I'm doing here now is I'm just kind of wiping over the paint with some lacquer thinner because uh, it's just on entirely too thick and this is just taking some of it off really quick like, just knocking off, you know, like the heavy layer so I'm not burning through so much sandpaper because the sandpaper was just continuously doing this. The paint has had plenty of time to cure, but um, this lacquer thinner is making the process much faster. It's kind of knocking it down. See that? It's already breaking through here. But you got to be careful not to go too far because then it's kind of hard to go back, you know? And this side, this side's pretty much done. This is as far as I'm going to take it because uh, I want just a little bit of black right here. Pretty much down in the middle in here with a little bit of black grunge. And then what's going to happen is I've got some custom stickers being made that say uh, Moto Pilot Customs. Pretty much, the stickers going to be pretty much like this. It's going to go over the clear coat. And basically I want the gas tank to fade to black in the front and on the bottom kind of gives it more of a two-tone look so it's not all one even tone so this side is pretty much done so I've taken off about as much paint as I want to um, I think it looks pretty damn cool right now I'm just hitting it lightly with some 220 just to kind of smooth off the surface before we put on a couple coats of clear coat so when I get done here I'll hang it up throw on some clear coat and then don't forget this makes a big difference. This, to me, obviously looks like crap. But when you put this on here, it just really finishes it off. So don't judge it too early. Okay, and once again, before I spray it, I'm just hitting it very lightly with a tack cloth. Make sure there's no particles on the gas tank when I spray the clear on. Just barely let it touch the surface. You don't want to press down because it's sticky. And you don't want the adhesive to come off on the gas tank. Alright, so here's the final version after two coats of satin clear coat. And you know what? The clear coat's awesome, dude. The tank doesn't have any shine to it, which is exactly what I wanted. Kind of has this two-tone black going up into silver. Resembles the Harley-Davidson Anniversary Edition bikes. I've always liked that black and silver look. This is not going to stay on here. This is just taped on. It's temporary. Let me uh, give you guys a quick walk around. And then here's a quick reminder of what the helmet looked like. You can see it's got a little more streaks going on here. Than what I have here. I don't really have too many streaks going on here, but I'm totally okay with that. But it's streaky here. It's got the nice dark streak coming up on this seam right here. Fades to black in the front. Does this little number here in the back. It's pretty much just metal from the back. I might get crazy and 
do something, do like a cool graphic right here like I did on my other fat boy. But uh, that's what it looks like without the sticker on there. I love, I love the way the black of the engine and frame flows into the gas tank. It's not this abrupt line, it just kind of blends in. So that's not, that's not very common. You know what, I mean, I do dig it, man. I mean, it's just one of those things. Right now I love it, I'm gonna sit on it for a week, make sure I still love it before I put a bunch of time into the back fender. We'll stop at the gas tank for now. It just takes a long time to do all this sanding and stuff. I, I really should have put less paint on there because you can see I took most of it off. For the back fender, I'm just gonna, I already painted it black, but I'm gonna strip it all, just wipe it all down. Just throw a little bit of black like I did like here. And that way I don't have to sand so much because uh, that was a lot of work. All right, guys, that's about a wrap. Oh yeah, I forgot to show you. There is the new toolbox. Oh, I have to make a video about how awesome this thing is and how organized you can get your garage by having a bigger toolbox than this cheesy little thing right here. I mean, it's not very little. It's actually pretty big, but not big enough for everything that I have. Anyways, that's a whole nother video. Thanks for hanging out. If you guys want to get your hands on this bike and win it, along with a full set of speed and strength riding gear, go to the Patreon, sign up. It's not too late. You can support the series and win this bike. It'll be shipped to you wherever you're at. The more you donate, the more entries you get. You know, I'm guessing there's maybe five or six videos left, so you don't want to wait too long to get in because then you run out of time. And when you sign up, you're not charged for all the previous videos, only the videos that come out after you signed up for Patreon. And, uh, yeah, there it is, dude. It's coming around. See you guys next video.